Okay. Did you get an invitation to a small group? Yes, Mariana, you. Um, yes, but I thought we weren't going. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Lisa, Lisa went. So she went. Okay. Yep. I haven't had a chance to eat anything. Okay. Um, so I need to third grade student with um, Down syndrome. And so I sit next to her and I have to make sure that she understands what she's doing. Um, you know, and that's not always easy to do. So one of my um, one of my themes is empathy. I have to like know her on a personal level. I need to understand what she's feeling and I need to relate to her. I'm a relater. Um, and then some of the other things I wrote, I need to know her, like, like I said, on a more personal level. Um, I just need to know, I just have to place her needs in, in front of my own, you know? So it's all kind of, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, that's kind of what I did. What are all your top five, Natalie? So my first one's responsibility. Then there's belief, then I'm a developer, empathy, and then a relater. So I take everything very seriously. I want things done right. I want to, I want to make things work. So. I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Siri jumping in. Do you have any thoughts on, Natalie, how the belief strength has helped you as your Oh, okay. Hi, Tina. Hello. <laughs> Let's get you into a breakout room. Hold on. Um, and they can catch you up and let you know kind of what the, what we're doing. Um, okay, I'll take care of her. Thanks. Wait. Were you in before, Tina? No. Weird. It's not even giving me the option to send you to a breakout room. Hold on. <laughs> I have never had that happen before. <laughs> um, so I have a question. Down at the bottom of your Zoom window, you should have like a couple of options like mute, stop video, participants, chat, etc. cetera. There, um, there should be um, either you can see breakout rooms or there should be three dots with more. Yeah. Um, do you um, either click on breakout rooms? Yeah. Can you click on breakout rooms and see if right. there's one that's available? What are you seeing? It says you have been assigned to breakout room or breakout room number three. Okay. And then is there a link or can you click on that? Breakout yes. room number three. Go ahead and do that. That'll send you to a breakout room. Hi, sorry I had to call you. No, you're but I was like I don't know how to make sure I like get a hold of her because I can't move people to breakouts. Yeah, yeah. So well, and she just missed the invitation to the breakout room. I had actually let her in, sent her, and yeah, find her. And is she that is that Tina? 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 Who? You be you, Tina? Tina Carlisle? Yeah. I don't know. Dining you. services, Tina. Dining services, Tina. Yeah. I don't know, Tina. What does she do? What's her role at? I don't know. I'll, okay. hold on. I would have to pull that up in box. I can look it up. It's not a big deal. I've got, well, I've got it. I've got box open. Uh, um, look in the Lincoln, like it's not any of the ones that we've done. It's the one I got from them to do the breakout. Oh. Have their, has Is that their, inbox? It, it should be inbox. Hold on. That's why I'm like, eh, let me find it. The Lincoln training list, May 8th. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's her. Like I know her face and I, how funny, but maybe she, I don't remember that being her last name. Maybe she got married. Okay. Fifth grade TA. Oh, interesting. Huh? Like I, I'm 99% sure that that's who I think it is. Okay. Um, yeah. Did you get some food? Um, yes, I still was trying to eat, but then okay. she popped on, so I had to keep eating. Okay. 
Thanks. But but your group like needs your help. <laughs> oh, they do. Yeah. Okay. So when you get it, like Jeanette, bless her heart, she's like, "What do you want us to do again?" <laughs> and I gave her some, and she's their learning strategist. And I was like, "Oh, honey, thank you." Okay. Um, all right, send me over. Okay. Um, you should have that invite down at the bottom if you see the breakout rooms. You should yeah. do an inv invite waiting. Bye. Okay, bye. I know. There's yeah. something happened. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you, lady? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Sorry, I'm just eavesdropping on all of the different groups. So. Oh, um, <laughs> we finished. You finished? Yeah. Everybody here? You already talked about all of yours? Uh -huh. We all drew your pictures. And you all drew your pictures? I love it. <laughs> okay. Well, feel free to decompress a little bit. Um, and I'm going to check on the other groups and see where we're at. Maybe we'll get um, pulled in, pulled back early. So. All right. Yeah. I've noticed that to be true when I think about my life. So that's not just something that I said on the strengths finder, but I feel like if everyone in my classroom also believed in that, it would be really easy. But I know that's not equally important to everyone. So maybe I could figure out a way to help try to share that vision with students, but will it work? Who knows, no guarantees. Um, I am really clued into what others are thinking and feeling, and um, I just need to find, prioritize it. Sometimes when things get really busy, I can tell. Kids are acting out because they're having a crummy day or whatever, and I never, I don't address it because I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. We got an agenda we have to stick to. So, um, but I've noticed the times when I do take the time to pull that student aside and really like go, okay, what's going on? We're able to solve the problem. So I think one of my challenges that I want to address this year is, is figuring out during the really busy times how I can help problem solve um, when I feel like I don't have time to and help and really prioritizing the students and what they're going through and, and really getting through the problem instead of just slapping punishments on them. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's kind of it. Okay, popcorn, Ashley. Okay, um, one of my job tasks is the TA supervisor. And The kids had their top three strengths identified. Could that be, or would that be helpful to their special ed teachers, or would it be helpful even maybe to other teachers and other of their peers to know what their strengths are? I think so, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we have to learn how to adapt to what they're doing. You know, we have to we have to know how they learn. Um, so. I think, and it would also be good for them to know, I think as well, it'd help everybody. And Joy, on the student version, do they only receive their top three? I thought they still had their top five. The student version, and Kristen, correct me if I'm wrong, they have 10 strengths total and I think they focus on the top three, is that right? Mm -hmm. But are they told the top five with the student code? Because I bought a student code for my daughter, but I thought she had five. So Robin, there's a student version that's actually the same exact assessment as the Clifton Strengths Finder. It's a student version that's for like high school kids and college kids. 
Um, and so it's the same assessment. So they have the same 34 strengths and they're given their top, top five, just like okay. we are. But what Joy's talking okay. about is there's actually like a junior high bridge high school version that has way broader categories than even the 34 themes that we're talking about. So like they have explorer or organizer or planner, like so there are, they're like way, way broad and they don't even map onto the 34 strengths. Um, so that one of the things that, that Gallup recognizes and that we recognize is that, you know, we want to steer clear of using these as labels per se, and just looking at the broader trends and tendencies and perspectives, especially when they're that young, um, as far as how they might grow and develop into those um, within that particular area without saying you are going to be a learner or <laughs> you know <laughs> you are going to have responsibility like you know let them still kind of develop that um as they as they grow so but leaning into those where they're still kind of naturally drawn and natalie you know correct me if i'm wrong you can kind of see where where kids are naturally drawn um you know to certain activities certain dispositions certain you know they have a certain way of thinking feeling and behaving and those are those talents right mm -hmm. yeah. so and Kristen have you found that um different different occupations like people can thrive if they have certain strengths or is it more like no matter the occupation, people just use their strengths to succeed at that particular occupation, if that makes sense. It's the second one. So um, you may initially be drawn to certain areas because of the strengths that you have. However, you can be successful at any occupation if you're using your strengths. So, um, and that's actually what breeds that success is recognizing and focusing on your strengths and minimizing those weaknesses or being able to delegate or to find the people to partner with when it's not kind of naturally in your realm. So, you know, wherever possible. <laughs> so sometimes it's not possible, in which case, yeah, I'm going to mediate for that. Um, you know, if, if, you know, if none of my strength, well, I'll give you an example and kind of a preview of an activity we're going to do. So none of, I have four of my top five strengths are in strategic thinking, right? So that is the ability to think through things and anticipate and generate thoughts. And there's a lot of stuff that's up in my head. My primary day job is working with people and individuals. So I aim or I use those themes as a conduit to gather information. I'm still gathering information, but I'm gathering information on the people I'm working with so that I can cultivate a relationship. So even though I'm not technically relationship building, I'm doing relationship building themes using my top five. Does that make sense? So, you know, I ask a lot of questions when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with my students so that I know their history and their context and their background. And that helps me help them and fosters a connection and builds that relationship. So, whereas somebody with a relator in their top five, you do those kind of things naturally because of the byproduct of having relator in your top five, you know. And it's maybe not as intentional, the question asking, as it is just wanting to get to know people. Does that make so sense? So as, as we cultivate strengths at Lincoln, mm -hmm. um, so that each person develops their own strengths, um, is that like saying that no matter what job they're in or what role they're in, they'll succeed at it more because they know how to use their own strengths? Yep. And they'll enjoy it more. So when you have those opportunities, if you're a relator and you have those opportunities to connect deeply with individuals, you enjoy it more. So if you have that space or that opportunity to spend time focusing on a task for Tyler or for Joy, I know you both have focus in your top five, 
you know, being able to have that time to just, this is the project that I'm working on and give it your undivided attention. That's what fills your bucket, so to speak. Or that could be an aspect that fills your bucket. Or you have just the ability to focus on that and shut out all distractions, whether you're paying attention to it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler's chuckle makes me think I hit a little too close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can be in a busy room and people talking to me and I can just focus right in on what I'm doing and just not hear it sometimes. <laughs> drives my wife crazy. Right. But if you're given that space and the understanding to do that, you're like, yeah, that can make me a pretty happy camper. So yeah. um, my coworker likes to tease me because I've got intellection high. It's my number one. And she'll walk into my office and it looks like I'm staring at the wall and I'm really got 14,000 things processing through my brain. And I'm just staring at the wall so that I can let my brain do its thing. I don't even notice that I'm doing it until someone walks in on me. And it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess I do that. And I'm like, doesn't everybody? No, no. <laughs> there was a funny story I heard about, um, so like the CEO of a company walks, <clears throat> and then he walks down the hall and then he notices there's a guy that's sitting in his chair looking out his office window. And then when he walks back, the guy, walks back past this guy again four hours later, that guy's still sitting in that chair looking out the window. He gets really upset and he goes and talks to the VP. He's like, who is that guy? He's been sitting there doing nothing for the last four hours. And then the VP goes, oh, that guy. He's, he's the engineer that's come up with our last three most profitable projects. And so we just, we let him sit as long as he needs to. And then the CEO goes, find him a bigger window. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great story. And that totally demonstrates strengths, right? So, and actually one of the cool things that happened from me doing strengths at work and realizing that intellection piece where I needed that space to think was then me asking permission from my supervisor or like letting her know, hey, when you come in with this great, wonderful, awesome idea, and you say, what are your thoughts? I am a much better employee and I can do my job so much better if I say, let me get back to you in an hour. Let me think about it. And the response I will give you in an hour will be a hundred times better than if I'm asked for a response on the spot. My response on the spot's good, but give me an hour and I'll have processed different pieces of it that then I can put into picture for her. And she's recognized it too. And she's like, that's awesome. Small, small change of just saying, let me get back to you in an hour at the end of the day. Huge difference in just how much even I enjoy my job. So I'm going to go check on the other rooms. Are you guys pretty much done, would you say? Okay. I think we're getting to that point. So we'll see you back in the main room in a second. about what did you learn about your own themes and how you apply it to your work? What, what did you learn? That I do it every day. <laughs> Without even thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Anything in particular you do every day, Sherry? What do you do every day? Um, well, I have to differentiate because I teach special ed. And so I have to be a learner both for myself of how to teach students as well as learning how each student learns and what their abilities and their struggles are. And then I have to be strategic about how I teach them. So awesome. they, that's a daily basis. That's a daily basis. Awesome. I love it. Who else? 
Um, I talked about multitasking. Okay. Um, I'm a first grade teacher and I'm constantly multitasking. Um, and then I multitask at home as well. <laughs> so <laughs> we just got a new dog. So now I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> So like a new which, child. Yeah, it is yeah. Like a new child. And which themes does that relate to, Melissa? Well, I, I kind of talked about, uh, I kind of related it. Well, I want to show you my picture first. Yeah, let's see the picture. <laughs> so this is a picture that I drew by myself. Um, <laughs> this is not my students. This is me, like, everywhere as I'm teaching. You know what I mean? So you're multitasking. Uh -huh. so I kind of connected it to, you know, I... Um, definitely have to have a lot of discipline in my classroom mm. uh responsibility for sure so i connected that with all of those okay that's awesome thank you anyone else want to share i can share mine okay so i used a ranger that's one of mine and let me show you my picture <laughs> this is what my desk looked like <laughs> I would have all the classes, I would color code, that, color code them so I knew which class was what class and which class needed to be passed back correctly. So I wasn't mixing all of the classes together. <laughs> that wow. <is> awesome. <laughs> and what's your job, Kendra? I'm a teacher's assistant for sixth grade. Okay, that's awesome. It's really true. She really did do that all the time. I was amazed by that. <laughs> <laughs> so for mine, I put down, I have to keep learning content because I have to make sure I know more than my kids know so I can teach them something. And so my, a bunch of my um, skills are that I keep wanting to learn stuff. So I drew a little book Whoops. Awesome. Yeah. to show that I have to keep learning content. That's so. fantastic. That's great. Um, Noelle, can I ask you to show yours too? Because I loved yours. Oh, it's like a very accurate representation of the way my brain works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just basically took me and the students and I um, kind of was thinking about a lot of my strengths are interpersonal mm -hmm. relationships related. So I was like, classroom management, that's definitely where those skills come into play. So just me and my students um, and all the ways that I use my strengths or can or the problems that I run into while using my strengths and how to solve them anyway so <laughs> I love it I love it so um, again this was just kind of a fun way to really get back into that language of strengths and reorienting ourselves to what are our top five strengths and you know where do we see them at play um, and also getting to know some of those strengths um, of others. Uh, so, you know, this was great for us to, to really share, you know, that, that part of the activity. Um, so our second activity is going to be done, again, in kind of some randomized groups. And I'm banking on mathematics to be in our favor right now um, because I want you to do two different things. The first is I want you to seek out and connect with someone that has a different team in their top five. So, and I think I've seen enough variety in your guys' themes that we should be able to accomplish this in these small groups, um, identifying at least one different theme. Um, and then ask that person, how do you describe and use your signature theme? Um, and find something new to learn about that particular theme. Maybe and hopefully um, you'll be with somebody that, um, uh, that has a theme that you really don't know anything about and you can learn something totally new. The other thing I want you to do is then to seek out and connect with someone that has the same theme as you. Um, and ask that person, how do they describe and use their signature theme? So one of the principles of strengths is that we may share one of our top five, but the order in which we have them and the order in which they sh um, show up with everything else will make them show up a little bit differently for everyone. So see if you can see what the differences are and how they show up 
even if they have the same theme. Does that make sense? Okay. So away we go. And I'm going to give you guys probably about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes to work through this um, and um, find those um, find those themes. Okay. All right. We'll see you back in a little bit. All right, Peter, did you get your invite? Uh, no. Okay, down at the bottom of your screen, look for breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Click on that. It should say that you've been invited to breakout room four. Uh-uh. Huh. Okay, I am gonna move you to <laughs> a different room. Okay. Let's do that. See if you get that invite. So maybe again, go, go down and click on breakout rooms. Yeah, I'm clicking join breakout room. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Oh, awesome. Hang on, that's, yeah, that's weird. That is um, super weird. Hmm. Okay. Oh, Here, there having... we go. Breakout room five. Now I see it. Oh, awesome. Okay. I actually want to put you back in breakout room four, though, because okay. there are fewer people in breakout room four. All so... right. <laughs> Try it again. We'll see. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, and now you've disappeared entirely. Where did you go? Oh, no. Oh, breakout room three? <laughs> no. I want you oh, in breakout room four. Four. Perfect. Go. All right. Okay. Thank Thanks, Peter. <laughs> How to do my picture, my video. Oh, but, but you're there, huh? I'm here. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I'm realizing that I can't see um, what anyone's like five strengths are that you put on your name unless you talk. So um, I don't know if anyone else is having that same problem, but I saw that I released and I looked through Levi's communication, connectedness, and empathy. All the time. Work and it doesn't then we, we are able to go ahead. So I feel like I have to be overly prepared so I can go with the lesson mm -hmm. or to the side of the lesson. And that's, that's your, lear oh my gosh, I'm doing like a mini session here, but that's your learner and your strategic as well. <laughs> so that learner is like, I need to know everything so I can impart that information to my students, but also that strategic, you're thinking, okay, whatever ends up happening in order to be adaptable and to be able to pivot, Oh, it's good. Hello. Oh. Hello again. So, so the Kristen, three of us are the only person I see who has three of the same as, as I do. That's amazing. <laughs> right? Oh. Carol, you and I are two birds of a feather. I guess. <laughs> um, there's only one common one, and that's positivity. And everyone else has all different. We're not matching anywhere. Yeah. Hey, Jeanette has intellection. Oh, you do too? Oh, I couldn't see. And she has learned. Hey, maybe we should ask about the one you were asking about, Ashley. Believer. Believer. Right. What is, am I saying that wrong? Belief. Belief? Belief? Yeah. So, belief is super fun. Is that something that you have, Ashley? Yes. Okay. So, tell me if I am right or wrong, but belief is 
um, that ability to identify things that truly matter and act in a way that aligns with those values or beliefs. Yeah. Yep, I can see that. Yep. So I was doing a training um, with somebody and I had like a bottle of water and, uh, and I threw that bottle of water in the trash and a person in the training got up, walked over to the trash, pulled it out of the trash and put it in the recycle bin. <laughs> and I went, do you really care about the environment? And they said, yes, absolutely. And I said, and do you have belief in your top five? And they went, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> cause that was just one of those actions that I could see if you have true belief, you're acting in accordance to align that belief into what you do. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay. So that how is, what is, is restorative? I want that. <laughs> <laughs> restorative is another fun one. Restorative looks for potential pitfalls or problems in an attempt to solve them. So folks who have restorative high are my problem solvers because um, they're looking for potential problems, even without thinking about it. So does anyone else have restorative? No. No? no? Oh, okay. I have that one too. Mm -hmm. That's actually a fairly common theme in Lincoln Academy as a whole. I've seen quite a few of those today. Okay. So, so maybe not in this group, but you're definitely not alone. So. Wow. So, um, Kristen, I have a question. What if I don't really like mine? <laughs> oh, good oh my gosh, you really are two peas in a pod, because I hated mine. <laughs> because they seem so self-centered. Like, it's all for me. Like, I want to learn, learn, learn. It mm. seems really self-centered. So, A, I would look at your insight guide um, for some feedback. Have you had a chance to look at that yet? I have, yeah. Okay. Um, so, because I would also then pay attention to what is your motivation behind learning? Because often when you have some of those strategic thinking themes, like we do input, intellection, and context, it puts us in a better position to understand others. So it does have this other focus, even though it seems fairly internal. So I would actually describe those strategic thinking themes as more of an internal process, but not necessarily self-directed or Hold selfish. <laughs> so would that make sense in your experience though, Carol? Would that make sense? Um, yeah, except I was telling my last group that um, my mom was widowed when I was two and, and so she pushed education so hard because that's mm -hmm. what we survived on was that she had was well educated and became a professor and such and so mm -hmm. she really pushed education for all of us and so I think that's partly why I keep always wanting to learn mm -hmm. it goes back to my childhood so right and it probably does and it probably can be related because those impacts where you know our motivators and our fulfillment, um, especially from an early age. Um, so, and I might be in a similar boat. My grandma was very well educated and pushed education. So, and again, I end up with these like strategic thinking themes. Right, yeah. But it's even something that when I shared my results with somebody who knew me well, when I shared them with my parents, um, they were like, oh yeah, completely. We saw that in you from age three when you taught yourself how to read or, you know, whatever yeah. the case may be. And actually there's a portion in my report on intellection that said, as a child, you probably used reading as a way to get out of the way of people in authority. And I was Whoa. like, <laughs> who's been watching me since I was little? <laughs> Because <laughs> I was like, that is a little too spot on. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, those insight guides can be actually pretty powerful. But it is interesting, too, when we think, too, about this mother-daughter combination. You guys share three. Um, and it brings up that kind of age-old debate. Is it nature? Is it nurture? Is it, you know, is it a combination? Where does that come from? But Gallup is doing a longitudinal study where they're following and they've done what's called strength spotting with kids as young as three and they're following them and their cohort is about in their mid twenties right now with very little changes, um, some subtle shifts. Um, and you'll hear that some people have taken this multiple times and they'll see those shifts 
but usually it's because of something huge that's systematically changed their value system uh, or the shifts that they're seeing really aren't that big of a shift. So like I used to have Achiever in my top five while I was in grad school the first time that I took this. Now Achiever is number nine. Didn't go real far, <laughs> but if I was just looking at my top five, I'm like, where did it go? Um, so, but then there have been people who have intentionally made strategic life choices and changes to use certain themes less or more, um, and then have gotten different results. So you can kind of game it that way too, but hmm. good questions. Well, Did I was sad I didn't get Achiever. <laughs> <laughs> and all five of mine are in the relationship category. All five. Ooh, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> she hated it. I <laughs> hated it. I do feel like I've always been a people person, but all five. <laughs> it's a little disappointing. No, so, so, you know, four of my five are in strategic thinking. And my first response are intellect and input and learner. They're all the same thing. I got robbed of having five teams because <laughs> I really only have two. <laughs> wow. So no, and part of it is just, you know, um, we are going to see and value and envy maybe some of those other themes that we don't speak as strong of uh, that we see how they help people get things done, right? Or they bring that new perspective and we can see and value that in others and that's part of the point is to say hey look at what i'm bringing to the table you know you're so cool you've got all these relationship building themes and how wonderful that you found a position that works well with building relationships right um and then you can look at and value and go man some of those executing themes like responsibility or achiever oh those would be nice to have yeah. So can we develop different themes in our lives? You can so we work on it or is it <laughs> the question is why? Why why would you want to or need to? That's really the question. Because right? I would be known as an achiever. <laughs> <laughs> why is that better than a relator? There is no better. <laughs> right? Well, ideally, wouldn't we want to have all the strengths? And, and actually you do. So it's just rank ordering which ones come most naturally. Okay. So even if they're down at the bottom for you, that doesn't mean you don't have them. It just means you may need to be more intentional about how you call that into play, right? So, um, so for example, I have woo. It's my number 34, which is winning others over. I don't walk into a room and exude like the charisma that you would find with somebody who has woo in their top five. So um, in the morning session, woo got brought up for two, two guys, Mr. D and Corliss. And I don't know if you guys know those guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so those are two guys that have woo in their top five. And judging on the responses of those who know them, they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? I don't do it. I don't do it naturally. Now, can I walk into a mixer or a networking event and find and connect with people? Absolutely. I am going to do it in a way that looks completely different than someone like Mr. D or Corliss. Right? And that's not a bad thing. Um, I can envy it and I can say, man, I wish that came easier for me, but what would I trade for it? You know, if it were going to be in my top five, what would I trade for it? And there are definitely days that I'm like, take my strategic thinking, <laughs> take my input away from me and I would trade that for a woe and a heartbeat. <laughs> Or there are days that I'm like, give me positivity. Or, you know, um, and maybe we can ask Mariana in the big room, my partner, she works in a field and everyone else in her department had the relationship building themes and she didn't. And she was like, but I build relationships. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so, and she does, and she's really good at it. It just looks a little different. So I want to know, Jeanette, what does maximizer mean? <laughs> Let's ask Kristen. <laughs> no, I want to know what maximizer means to you, Jeanette. And actually, I'm going to go well, and check on oh. the other guys. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh oh, people are on their phones. Is this a good <laughs> sign or a bad sign? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's our reports. Our reports. Okay. <laughs> so the one that you and I share was harmony, right? Yeah. Well, we see. don't enjoy conflict. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I feel like that's definitely. <laughs> I can see that in both of us for sure. That, that's. Totally. You do what you want. You do you. <laughs> <laughs> <Give> me. <laughs> I, I'm with I, you. I gotta get a little fire in me. Yeah. Come on, stir up something. <laughs> <laughs> don't do something, Aaron. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that one's gonna play into kindergarten yet, so we'll see. Oh. No adaptability what's that adapt you just adapt everything that's the uh, one let's see it's the first one um they tend to be now people who take things as they come and discover the future one day at a time so it's the opposite of joy <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're going with the flow type of people <laughs> Which is probably why mine are at the bottom of your list. <laughs> yeah, so adaptability is my number 34. <laughs> it's my number one. So there we go. <laughs> so what's achiever? Is that just a, is achiever just a, what it says? You just love to achieve, work hard, says you have focus to joy. So achiever is, what does it say specifically about being an achiever? Um, well, I can tell you how I use it. I, it's, even though it's my number, what is it? My number three strength, it's the one I use last. So I use futuristic first to get clear on what the future looks like. And then I use learner to learn about it. I use restorative to figure out what are the challenges our kids will encounter in the future? I use focus then to say, okay, well, how do we focus and help them to start succeeding today? And then I use my achiever last to say, okay, now that we're clear on the future, we know what the blocks could be for them, we're focused, now let's get the job done for them. So I, I, I figured out that's how I use it kind of in order. <laughs> so do you, that, that this has always been a problem for me presenting having a problem presented to me and then like I don't know I like it'll just happen the way it happens right I'm not the problem solver <laughs> so, so I'm the opposite of you Joel I'm by the seat of my pants and here we go <laughs> like, we'll take it a day at a time but we're just trying to have foresight and vision that's just like it it boggles my mind too much to think that hard <laughs> I'm just, like oh my gosh I'm so glad you're here in this world joy <laughs> yes. we need people my husband is like that a lot and so I don't say that we clash I think that we complement each other and the fact that he thinks about the future and I'm here just like okay this is what's in front of us right now let's go let's go let's go and and um, and he's like, no, 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 no. He's got to put the brakes. He's like, wait a minute, because this will have an effect on this. And so I can totally like see myself just going like, oh my gosh, how long is this planning going to take? Because <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, um, uh, one guy that I dated, adaptability was like his number one, and it's my number thirty-four. And on our second date, we're walking, right? And I'm like, I need to know your life vision. Like, I just, <laughs> like, what's your 10-year plan? Where do you see your 10-year 
years from now. <laughs> I need a report, like by tomorrow morning. And he's like, uh, see ya. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Planner, where's that plan book? <laughs> well, and see, but how awesome is it that you guys can find those partnerships and that complementary nature, right? So if it's like, I respect and understand that he is not gonna have that 10 year plan, so right like so if this was a conversation but of course it comes up on a first date or second date right <laughs> wait you mean that's not typical <laughs> right but it's like you know you know i have my partner and he has themes in his top five that i'm like what in the world are we doing and it was so enlightening to me because points where it used to be pieces of conflict I now understand. And I'm like, oh, I don't get it, but I get it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, if, if Amy and Joy are then tasked to work together on a project, ooh, what's that gonna look like, right? Well, I would not be happy. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, pre-strings conversation, maybe not, but post-strings conversation, maybe we break it up and Joy says, I do the visioning and let's, you know, here are some anticipated problems that I know Amy's going to be able to handle and roll with. And, you know, you know, you bounce off each other in that way. Right? So very true. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's like a dynamite team to be able to do that. Right. Yeah, I, I'm so grateful for my, my strong adaptive friends because like if I'm all planning and let's say something doesn't go according to plan and then I have a meltdown, the, my adaptive friends are like, we've got this. Come on, let's, let's deal with it as it is right now. I'm like, okay, now you're in, you're in charge. Like <laughs> I yeah. need to emotionally recover and plan for when, once we're recovered. But <laughs> right. So yeah. It's and vice versa, the adaptability people sometimes need someone to come in and improve that structure and say, this is what needs to happen in order to like move things forward instead of always being in the now, right? But recognizing the time and place and recognizing the value of both. One of my favorite clients that I worked with, she came to me and she's like, Kristen, I need to be more productive. And I said, okay. And we looked at her top five and she has adaptability and a couple other themes. And she's like, yeah, my boss, she blocks off three hours every day that she just cruises through her emails and she gets all this done. So like, I'm thinking if I get up an hour earlier and I block off that time and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, that's not normal for you. That's not natural for you. That's something that Joy would do or something that her boss would do because they have focus in their top five. And I'm like, there is nothing wrong with being adaptable. In fact, it's gotten you to where you are working in our student conduct office. You roll with, you know, whatever needs to be rolled with. But when it comes to email, if you sit down and try and do three hours like this, <laughs> make yourself crazy. And it's not going to last. You got to lean into that strength and make it work for you. It's like, oh my gosh, my drone. So we spend the next three weeks looking at productivity tools that are meant for people with adaptability. So, you know, and finding systems to work. Yeah. All right, good conversation, you guys. I'm gonna go check on everybody else. It looks like we're about, I think we're, yeah, we've got about 10 more minutes, I think. We good? Okay. Yeah. All right. responses on how we did it was it was like 95 percent so happy with it so yeah. are you Kristen are we are you done I'm checking on folks how are you guys doing um great but as long as you're here so this is Kendra with the white lines behind her yes and her mom is Tina Carlisle I don't know if you've seen her yes she was taking her assessment and it it like shut off in the middle 
Ooh, okay. And she can't figure out how to either get back on and continue or to start over. She's completely lost, but she doesn't have her five yet. I told them I'd tell you about it. Okay, and that's Tina Carlisle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right, I will. And she, it would be interesting to find out what her strengths are because she went through and she read about everything and then she picked out the five she thought she was because mm -hmm. she didn't have the results. So I would love to see what her real five are compared to what she thought they would be. Mm -hmm. That would yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So here's the fun thing that happens is that we're actually, um, we have some good gut instincts. So usually when I have people do that, they're pretty able to identify two or three of their top five but they'll often be way off base with four and five or we're with a couple of them. Um, and part of that is because it's so normal and so natural that we're not even paying attention to the fact that we do it. Mm -hmm. um, so they're hitting on more of like some of those dominant themes that they're paying attention to or that they call on or that they're like aware of, but they're not necessarily tapping into that internal natural way of thinking, feeling and behaving. So, um, but it would be fun to, to see what she did. So, mm -hmm. cool. yeah. Okay. Awesome. So we found a couple of news. We found a couple of the same. What did you guys find as far as, um, similar overlapping strengths? Well, Melissa's basically well, a loner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's just in this group, Melissa. Just in this group. <laughs> I know. I'm all over the place. <laughs> I told them I'm surprised that I'm disciplined and Robin and Peter aren't. Oh, okay. Peter and I do discipline at the school and neither one of us have it as a strength. <laughs> so you wonder why we have the problems we have. Maybe it's because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can do discipline for others. It's oh, discipline. Okay. <laughs> and I would say Melissa does have self-discipline. I can give her anything and she will find a way to be the very best at it. So that's, that's why we're really happy she's the Title I coordinator. <laughs> right. <laughs> so cool. Awesome. I love it. Okay, I think um we're just about done. So um I'm just gonna check on a couple other rooms and just watch for my callback. Or if you guys feel like you're done, you're welcome to go back to the main room. Um, cause I think we're going to be done in about 10 minutes or so. So sound good. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Be able to accept unpredictable events in your life on the basis of sheer faith. Perhaps you sense there is a force greater than you at work in the world. Occasionally, you can live with not knowing the exact reason why something good or bad happened to you and not to someone else. Instinctively, you may be determined to make the acquaintance of certain individuals you identify as seekers of truth. Perhaps you are attracted to people who ponder philosophical questions such as, what is the meaning of life? Or what is beauty? Or what constitutes wisdom? Or why do bad things happen to good people? Or why should ordinary people like me even ask these kinds of questions? By nature, you might be determined to do good for people and or the environment. Perhaps you are puzzled by people who cause harm without realizing they're hurting themselves. See that so much with my students. <laughs> it's very likely that you occasionally sense that you are part of something bigger or more important than yourself. Maybe this conviction influences choices you make in life. Chances are good that you sometimes sense a special bond with certain individuals regardless of whether you've met them Perhaps time or distance does not prevent you from feeling closely linked to specific people or the lives they lead. Hmm. Super interesting. Yeah. So it almost seems like you connect with people because of their, like what they think and how they feel. Um, and I connect with people just because they're people. And, yeah. everybody, <laughs> and everybody should be create or treated equally. Yeah, I really see the the correlations between that one and your harm, the way your harmony, was it harmony? Yeah, harmony, yeah. like, go. Yeah. Probably have to figure out what this one aligns with. I feel like it aligns pretty closely, actually, with my harmony one as well.
while he was there. <laughs> Hi, he made that decision out of positivity. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Let's bring it back in, quick girls. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, Teacher's uh, walking uh, around. Uh, She's coming to uh, me. Uh, <laughs> and that is why positivity is good. <laughs> I, I love you. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. I'm just checking in, just seeing how things are going. Okay, so I think we had some pretty good discussions. Hey, okay. you're welcome to come back to the main room anytime. So, um, okay. if you feel like you're kind of there, that's okay. 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 We'll see you then. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so Kendra, your mom is Tina, right? Yeah. So the ones that she picked, um, so she just went through and picked like her top five, what she mm -hmm. was. Okay. So how yeah. fun. Uh, I love it because she, she put up like adaptability and arranger um, and some of those. So harmony was one of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out and get her to, to finish. All right. <laughs> so, cause you've got arranger and adaptability in your top five as well. Yep. Awesome. Welcome back folks. Okay. We're gonna go. All right, there we go. <laughs> you know that that would have happened at some point. No, you do have a question. Maybe that's like my mother's <laughs> You know, they do show you if you, yeah, okay, you just let me show you the whole thing. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm just checking. Yep, we've got everybody back. So, yay. Okay. Cool. So, let's talk about what we just talked about in our groups. Um, so, there's this um, activity that we do that's called Love Crazy Envy. Um, and it's basically going through what's something that you love about one of your themes, what's something about one of your themes that kind of drives you crazy. Um, and then what's the theme that you might envy? And so this kind of helps us um, debrief what we, what we just did in our sessions 
Um, is there anyone out there that would love to mention um, a strength that they really love, um, that they have? I will. I have okay. relator and okay. I'm really glad that I do feel like I can, it doesn't matter the person and it doesn't matter how different we are. I can always find some way to relate with them. So I'm That's glad okay. I have that. Yeah. She still that, has people from high school to call her up for advice. <laughs> and uh, that's amazing that's amazing that's great connection um how about um does anyone um like envy relator does anyone not have relator i don't have it i envy it yeah i totally envy that <laughs> um and why would you envy that one i just to be able to relate to people in so many different ways and that it doesn't matter the person and that you people want advice from you, like, oh my gosh, that'd be, I died and gone to heaven. <laughs> like, no, nobody wants advice from me. I'm consistent and boring. And <laughs> oh, no. No, I don't want information from you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, get it. I totally get it. <laughs> what about um, does anyone is anyone willing to share um, a strength that that kind of drives them crazy that they they you know wish that not that they wish they didn't have but just that they they um, sometimes feel like it's too much like for me achiever actually drives me a little crazy because I really have a hard time <coughs> just being. Um, without having some kind of goal every single day that I have to like reach, right? Whether that be something simple like I need to clean the bathrooms today or whether that be like, oh, I need to write this paper or whatever it is. So for me, Achiever can be a love, but it can also drive me a little crazy. Does anyone else want to share their crazy? Hey, just to go along with Achiever, I'm one of those that will write my to-do list, but I will write things that I've already done just so I can cross it off. <laughs> yes, I do that too. Oh man. Yes. And so, right. So it's just, we, but we can't help it. It's, it's who we are. <laughs> so, um, and the expectation sometimes is, doesn't everyone have to-do lists like this? Like, doesn't everyone have to have like four different to-do lists on their phone, right? For different categories. Um, my work to-do list, my home to-do list, you know, um, what else? What's another one that's not achiever that, that may, may feel, um, drives you crazy. Not so interesting because that's my envy one. I envy achievers. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's my envy one too. I've been okay. talking about it the whole time. I don't have achiever and I want it. <laughs> I know. I, I feel well, you. Sure like, I'm like, I want to be motivated by my to-do list. <laughs> I'm motivated by, I don't know. Anyway, my thing that, um, it was really interesting. I think it was Kristen, the very first reading, talked about how sometimes we read through these strengths and go, um, that's not a strength. That's a negative thing. Right. So there is one strength where there is a small aspect of it where I do feel that every single time. Um, I have restorative, yep. which is not a bad strength. It is nope. a lot about making the world better, making you better, making humanity better. But the last three sentences or like and my like what makes me stand out section one are true to the way I operate and two I've seen a lot of detriment to myself wow. um and it says you prefer to point out deficiencies mm -hmm. then you help individuals eradicate that is remove or wipe out all traces of deficiencies and you probably need to fix it approach on yourself too yeah. and so this idea of like let's make the world a better place by like burning all the bad things <laughs> um, <laughs> uh is kind of a uh not a very sometimes can be a, um an unhealthy way to approach improvement right. mm -hmm. and so i find that i'm like that why did they put that in the strength section that should be a this is a negative right um, so that is puzzling me how how can a fix it attitude of burn the bad instead of focus on the good <laughs> be a strength right well and I think about the other strengths that you have as well almost everything else that you have is relationship based. It's connectedness, it's empathy. A lot of those could temper that kind of burn it down. Everything is bad. Right. Um, 
And it's funny, it's funny that you mentioned restorative because that's one of the strengths people have when they question their strengths. Um, <laughs> Oh. And I question like why? <laughs> um, like there's, now. <laughs> there's literally five strengths. I've had a student work with me once for like three of those five. And he was like, I don't get this, this, this. And I see the problem here. And I'm like, aha, um, I know why you're doing that. Um, so, um, and that would be a great kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation as well. But, um, and that's the thing is, is knowing, knowing how to manage it too. And knowing and catching yourself when you are being too like, internal with it or um yeah turning it inward um that's something to be wary of when you do have restorative um but i think allowing yourself to tap into that harmony and that connectedness and that empathy holy cow um using that to drive the restorative rather than letting your, yourself kind of fall into that that the negative trappings you know um you've got such great things to buffer that um anyway but yeah so does anyone does anyone feel like they are envious of restorative, of being able to see a problem and get to the solution? Because there are some strengths that would rather run away from the problem <laughs> um, rather than addressing it head on. Um, so is anyone um, wanting something like that? Is anything, is that something someone that might envy? Mm. I do have a question. Think about everyone you were in a group, small group with. Um, you know, in my group, there were great questions about, you know, can you tell me more about what futuristic is or tell me more about what is this connectedness? Um, do you feel like out of your small groups, there was something when, when that person was talking about their strength um, that you did envy, that you were like, oh, I wish I had that, other than something like Achiever, right? Um, what other strengths are there that you heard from others and kind of heard their description and thought, oh, I, that's really cool. I wish I had that in my top five. I did, as we were talking with Joy, she has futuristic, I think. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely the opposite of me. And to be able to have a vision of things, down the road is so yeah. impressive to me and wow. i really i really don't have that equality at all it's right. just the here and now what do i need to do right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. but to see that and to be able to have that gift of seeing and analyzing things to see what the future could be is very right. cool i yeah. don't do that that's very good that's a good one quality. that's a good one yeah and yeah and you've got consistency and responsibility but what I love is that you have consistency, but also adaptability, which is really great. But that's, that allows you to, to pivot um, in the here and now, whereas people who, who don't have adaptability in their top five um, might not be able to do that in the way that you are able to. And so well, I can't do that. No, I, mm -mm. if something changes from the original plan, I need like half an hour to grieve what could have been um, <laughs> and be, be upset about it. And then I can adjust and, okay, let's move forward. Um, but adaptability is definitely not, it's like my number like 32 or something <laughs> out of 34, right? So I envy adaptability. That's one that I envy. Um, and I know a lot of people might struggle with that one because it can mean that sometimes they can't make decisions right away or, you know, whatever. But, um, but to me, that's actually something I, I wish that I had because it would, it would help me a lot <laughs> um, in many aspects of my life, but it's just not something I'm naturally wired to do. So, so that's Thank mine. I am envious of adaptability. And I, envy, I envy your responsibility. I don't have a scrap of that in me. I don't. I mean, I, I, you would think a parent and somebody over the age of 50 should have that, but I don't have it. Um, so I love that about you. I think it's awesome. And I, my whole family wishes that I had that. Everyone I know probably wishes that. I'm totally shoe from the hip. Let's see what happens now. That's so awesome. See, and that's the beauty of this is kind of hearing Yes, there are a lot of similarities, right? Um, this team has a lot of relationship building strengths and that's beautiful and wonderful. Um, but at the same time, they're expressed differently. Um, and so that's why we're kind of doing this kind of activity where you learn to appreciate what you bring to the table and how those differences are advantages um, and how we contribute in our own unique ways. Um, but also 
kind of going, okay, you know, even though I'm really not naturally wired that way, I really appreciate this about this person. And that's what we're trying to build with, with that strengths culture is also that strength spotting and strengths appreciation of others. Um, and so that's something Kristen and I do working together often. Um, I just, wow, Kristen, I value your strategic thinking themes. Whereas at the same time, she really values my activator and my achiever <laughs> um, because I'm able to take that strategic thinking and, you know, move that into, um, into something practical and realistic and, you know, um, move forward with it. So, so that's something else to start doing now as well is to start um, doing that strength spotting in each other and strengths appreciation in, that you see in others. Um, and I'm already hearing that. And so already that's, that's beginning and that's wonderful. And again, these were all things you may have already seen in each other. Um, we were talking about Holly with her woo and how, I don't know if everyone knows Holly, but Holly with her woo and how she is able to um, help deal with situations with parents, for example. <laughs> um, you know, you, you already knew, send them to Holly, have them talk to Holly. Um, and Holly knew that about herself, but now there's an understanding of where that's coming from and why and um, being able to kind of own that as an actual talent and strength and aiming it in ways that can improve um, and benefit everyone you know, at Lincoln. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, and understanding, let me ask one more question. If a couple of people could answer, do you feel like hearing from others about what their theme meant helped you understand a little bit more about that theme or about how, kind of how it fits into the big, bigger picture? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How yeah. did you feel, Tina? What did you feel? Well, it made me realize that I have more strengths than just five. Yeah. And um, I wish I could put down more than just the five. Um, not to not to be boastful, but just to say, oh, I'm not limited to just these five. Yeah. And oh yeah, I agree with that. And oh okay, I am envy of that, but that I still have other things that can give me the self-confidence that I need to go forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what's neat about the dyna theme dynamics too, is it's not like these are operating in their own single little way. Um, it's all influenced by the, all of them, all 34, right? Um, and that's what's cool about, even if you don't have your full 34, hearing some of these other strengths and going, that really, really, really resonates with me. I'm wondering if I have positivity in my like top 10, like it's gotta be there or woo or um, includer or strategic, whatever it is. Um, there are going to be certain themes that really resonate with you and they are likely going to be somewhere in that top of your, of your list. Whereas there may be themes that you hear and that's where that envy comes from. Like, oh man, I really know that I just do not operate that way shoot, that's okay. Um, you know, if I ever need to use that strength, I can tap into it. Cause we all have, we have all 34. Um, but there are just some that you just don't use regularly or naturally as naturally. Um, but in those cases, that's where you find people who have those strengths and, and work with them or get their advice or feedback or whatever it is that you need. Um, and that's why we like to talk about each other's strengths with each other. Um, so that we all know, where other people are coming from and, and, and how they operate and stuff too. So anything else anyone want to add? Um, maybe how you noticed, maybe, yeah, one more question. How did you notice strengths that you had, sim similar strengths that you had and how they're expressed differently? Does anyone, anyone from a group want to share or like a couple of people from the same group want to share what they noticed? Well, let me go. I noticed something that I didn't realize I had instilled in this in, until I talked to Kendra, my daughter there, um, that I, I'm an arranger and she <laughs> put down that same skill. Um, and it wasn't because I really taught her that because she didn't go and do the things that I did when I was catering and and being in charge of groups, but somehow that skill set has instilled in her as well. And that's one of those strengths that she chose. So yeah. it, it's amazing how living in two different parts of the school, we still can be with that same. Yes. Strength. Yes. 
you can still be using a ranger in very different ways. And that's the beauty of strengths is, again, it's not tied to a specific type of job or specific part of the school, right? It's tied to you as a unique human being. And it's how you use it in whatever you choose to do for a career. Um, that's where you maximize it, right? And so that's the beauty of strength. That's what I really love about it, that it's not a placement in terms of careers. It's, um, it's very individualized. Yeah. Does anyone else want to share similar strengths that they had and thoughts on that? Okay, right. I thought it was interesting in our in the first session. Um, Tyler and I have three of the same strengths in our top five, and we do you know like we do pretty different things work wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that kind of tells me like my passion. One strength that um, Amy mentioned is, is futuristic. That's one that was different. Um, so I've kind of led in my career with my fourth strength, which is futuristic. And then I use the other three to back it up. Yeah. And so it seems like we can use our strengths in different order, you mm -hmm. know, to do different things. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. That was eye-opening to be like, yeah, we're, we might have three out of five and we can still be, very different but still maybe understand how each other thinks more easily because of that yeah oh i like that yes um i worked with um two, two women that had three of the same and i think they might have even been in the same spots on the ranking um and there were similarities they both had competition um uh, so that was always fun to watch <laughs> but um but they were buffered by different things and one was a little bit more influencing and one was a little bit more executing um and it was it was interesting because there were similarities um but then they operated very differently as well and so and and had strengths in different ways um and i, I like how you said so here's the thing with strengths as well we yes they're they're listed in this this order right um but again with life changes, with career changes, um, you know, they may shift out of that order. So sometimes it's a little easier to draw like a little pie chart with five slices of pie and just write all of your strengths there rather than seeing it as this one, two, three, four, five, you're seeing it as the whole, right? Um, and so then it's a little bit easier to kind of picture those dynamics rather than, than really operating under that that ranked system. So that's just a suggestion to kind of help visualize what we're talking about as well. Um, yeah, anything else anyone wants to share about, um, about what they talked about in our group? I, I can share really quickly, a uh, number four, three of the four of us had Achiever um, in my group. And we joked about how, yeah, we're the ones who may be working through the summer, you know, or um, um, just kind of checking, checking things off that list, getting things done. Um, and it's, we, we just, we are that way. Um, and so that was something we joked about, but all of us had, our achiever was expressed differently. Um, but, but we all felt the same way with like the stamina and, um, um, you know, I think the other two people had achiever and responsibility. So theirs looked different than mine because I don't have responsibility. Um, does anyone else want to share? I'd love to hear from, from more of you. So just really quick, um, sure. Noelle, Noelle and I both had harmony, but her harmony was what I think you would probably think of as the definition of harmony, you know, making sure everybody's getting along and, and their emotions where my harmony was making sure the workload is balanced and everybody has the same amount of workload. So I thought that was interesting. Beverly, do you, what else do you have? Do you have consistency? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I love yeah. it. That's I my top how, one. <laughs> I love how that consistency is influencing your harmony. How neat. Wow. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Okay. I have Everybody. one more really fast. Oh, please. Yes, Robin. In my, in my last group, we were just discussing, we all set, shared our strengths. And then I thought it was hilarious that Melissa said that hers, she had discipline and Peter and I were both in her group and we're the ones over disciplined for the school and neither <laughs> one of us have discipline. So when we get to the really hard kids, we're just going to call Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice. We said she can do it all. We have no problem with that. <laughs> I totally support her in, in doing that. <laughs> all right, Melissa, it's on you. <laughs> yeah, if you pay me more, I will. And then... <laughs> Trust me, they can't pay you enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because it is interesting to note, too, what is my assumption about what does discipline mean? Yes. Before I talk to somebody with discipline, is it the same thing that I do providing discipline to these kids versus Melissa's discipline is that self-discipline <clears throat> to get things done, right? Yeah. So having those conversations about not just what the you assume yeah what you assume that strength actually means um not giving certain strengths uh weight of this one's better this one's worse this right. one's boring this one's exciting this one's you know uh, yeah Bever was it beverly that was like i'm boring i don't remember who that was that was saying that yeah that was <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> you're not boring <laughs> So, all right, well, let's actually take a 10 minute break. Um, stand up, stretch, walk away from your screens for a minute, give your eyes a break, um, and come back and we'll do one more activity before we end the night. So, come back at 7 31. Wait, bring yeah. it on. <laughs> With that, actually, I think we have. Oh, there are a couple of people that still have kind of their mics and videos turned off. Um, so maybe give um, um, so maybe give it just a, another second. Um, but maybe yeah, maybe then they're just eating. what's that? Maybe they're just eating. Yeah, food is good. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm just blanking it so you don't see me chewing on all my food. <laughs> <laughs> just mute it. Just mute it. Make sure, yeah. Just, make just sure. mute it, but we're fine watching. It's fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Mariana, do you actually want to kick off uh, the description of the next activity? I can pull it up on the screen. Yes, and I'm, I'm happy to do that. So the next activity goes along really well with what Robin was just talking about, if you guys were kind of hearing that. We are going to actually talk about how our strengths apply in each domain. Um, so there's four domains, um, and I will be putting the, the description of the domains. Um, I'll be, make sure your mic is turned off. Um, I, I'll be putting the description of the domains in the chat. So even when you break out into breakout groups, you should all be able to pull up that image and it'll tell you what each domain is. There's executing, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. Four domains and each strength falls into a particular domain. Um, and so what we're doing is we are actually going to split you guys out into the domain where you have the most strengths of your top five, or if you have like two strategic thinking, two relationship building, and one executing, it's going to be based on rank. So if you, know, if you have like your one and your four, are influencing, then we will have put you in the influencing group rather than relationship building if that was your three and five. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you will be split into groups according to your dominant domain. Um, so even if it's not your number one or two, but it's your three, four, and five, that's kind of how we wanted to split you. Um, so you may not share the same themes as this says. You might, you may not. Um, so you might have um, you know, influencing themes like activator and communication and woo, and someone else may have other influencing themes, but you're still kind of leaving out with that domain. And so what we want you guys to do is talk about, okay, hey, we are all relationship building. We're, we're all leading with relationship building. Um, and instead of just talking about how do I apply this in relationship building, how do I apply this to be strategic? How do I apply my relationship? relationship building or our collective relationship building to be influencing how do we execute things and get things done using our relationships this is such a great activity to kind of break out of that mindset which we tend to hear a lot um, where you you know as robin was saying i have these relationship building ugh, you know and it helps us to kind of not compare ourselves in that way and to go okay i know i know how to get things done i'm just using my connections with other people 
to, to get there, or I'm using my strategic thinking to influence or whatever it is. So, um, it's, yeah, it's just a way to kind of recognize how all four domains can be covered by that, um, main dominant domain. Um, so we also want to talk about not just how do you apply your main theme, um, to each domain, but also how does your dominant domain complement those other domains? So let's say, you know, you are working with people who are more in the strategic thinking domain and your relationship building. So not only do we want we, you guys to talk about how do you use relationship building to be a strategic thinker, but how does your relationship building complement those who operate mostly out of that strategic thinking domain? So that way we can kind of work on, okay, that cohesion um, as well. So that's, that's what we're wanting to do. Um, uh, we, I think our groups are like five to eight people, Kristen, yeah? Um, and so we're gonna split you guys out into breakout rooms and you're welcome to, you know, to write this down and then share um, when we do a little debrief. Um, but basically you're going to do, how do you use your dominant theme to influence, build relationships, think strategically, and to execute or get things done? The little image that I'm gonna share in the chat box is going to include the description of each domain. So it's not just what strengths are there, but it actually describes what that domain means so you actually know what to plan around. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna break you guys out. Um, and then also, once you've kind of looked at how do we use this theme for each domain, I also want you guys to look at how does my theme complement each of the other domains as well. Um, and that goes into, you know, that power of strengths and partnerships, um, differences are advantages. People need one another, all of that stuff. So I'm going to throw that into the chat before, wait, no, don't join don't the breakout go. rooms yet. No, nope, don't go okay. yet. Don't go. Okay. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. That way you can actually see, cause otherwise it'll like take away. Okay. The, Sorry, Mariana. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. So you guys should be able to open the grid that I just put into the chat and pull it up on your computer. It should say four domains of team strength. Um, it's not the best quality, but it's there. Um, and it lists a description of that domain and then which strengths go in there. And so that way you kind of have something to operate around. Okay, go. And if you lost that link to the invitation to your breakout room, it's down at the bottom. So. Um, So it should be next to like the chat and reactions. You should see breakout rooms and see your invitation. Oh, why did we? I am not seeing it at the oh, bottom of the screen. Actually, hold on just a second, Tyler. Yours bounced back. Actually, a couple bounced back. I don't know if it was because we left. I lost internet for a minute, so that Got might it. be it. Oh no. <laughs> There you go, Tyler. That should be out to you. Natalie, I'm working on yours next. And Beverly, I've got you next. There we go. Now we've got everybody assigned. And then Jeanette's. Jeanette? Uh, yeah, just give me a sec. Okay. So you're wanting me to just join myself to whichever group? No, you should have had an invitation to um, a strategic, strategic thinking. thinking. Yep. Got it. Okay. Uh, okay. I think, okay. Hey, I but like if we do eliminate backpacks, um, we yeah, we want those kids to be able to still have their stuff and everything, so yeah. So, the, Kristen, we've been talking about how we are strategic, the, the strategic people that are going to help get things in view for this next year, <laughs> <laughs> and then how we'll use the other people in order to put it into practice. <laughs> The, the, ones, the ones who care about the influencing, right? And who are really there for that. And <laughs> the executors of these. So you got to come up with the ideas first. 
we were saying all our brains are like, oh, how do we do this and this and this and this and this? <laughs> <laughs> we're already like, ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Peter, are there legal um, consequences if somebody gets COVID at school? Is can the school be sued? Not. That's a great question. It's unknown territory, but pretty much, I if the state, if we are following the state requirements, then no. And you as a school just can't make a guarantee that they're not going to get COVID. Right. Uh, so you send out a waiver to all the parents saying, you know, we'll do our best, but. Yeah, and, and we really say, um, and I think there are going to be some parents who completely opt out of it, and so we have to kind of have a program for that in place too. Um, yeah, because some are, are seriously concerned about underlying health issues in their family and things like that. I have two students that I know won't be at school until there's a vaccine. Yeah. So, but if they don't attend in person at all, can, they just, can we just say you have to homeschool them, not no. even online? Nope, we can't do that. Oh. So we still have to provide some sort of structure for them. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, wow. yeah, it, it's pretty tricky. And, but we also have to have a structure in place for, like Carol, say you do get COVID. You're out for two weeks. How are we going to keep your students kind of functioning? Can you do stuff from home? Or you were with someone who had COVID and you're self-quarantining, right? Right. Um, then how do we continue that instruction for the kids because that's in the best interest of them while you're sitting at home? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a, such a nightmare. Yeah. So, yeah. I just flew back from Virginia and I, when I landed, I turned off my phone off of airplane mode. There was a text from my husband saying, oh, you can't come home because um, I'm under 14 day quarantine because my sister just got COVID and she was just here. So I had to find another place. I couldn't even, I had to live out of my carry-on for another two weeks at a different Oh, house. I'm so sorry. Wow. <laughs> so that kind of stuff is, is a reality for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So as we're brainstorming, we know to call on all of you. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah. I, I know, our, I'm, I'm looking at each one of you and I know our, everybody's minds are kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this or this or this. I'm, like, Whoa. I'm curious, how many more strategic thinking um, people are there in the school compared with the other categories? Um, I can actually pull that up if you're interested. Okay. Um, cool. So, and I yeah. think like, I are think we in the minority? <laughs> um, not a minority, but relationship building is definitely the clear winner. <laughs> um, oh. So, let's see. Does that? show you the the team strengths grid is that what you guys are seeing yeah just yeah so, so it looks like relationships and, and executive is the strong part right yeah. so 39 percent um of the lincoln team has relationship building in their top five 32 percent executing 19 percent strategic thinking and then influencing is nine percent <laughs> wow so. Mm -hmm. huh. So, and then it's kind of fun too, because, and I like to pick on our influencing theme folks, right? So I was picking on Corliss a little bit this morning. <laughs> Most people know Corliss and it goes, oh yeah, that's why. It's because he's got those influencing themes. Uh, Mr. D was another one, um, but Holly K, um, you know, so, or there's one, one here and there. So, yeah. you know. Um, anyway, oh, Kendra Carey. Huh. That's, that's quite interesting. So, and this looks at the board as well. Um, but well, I just thought everybody felt like you. <laughs> right? Well, and here's what I love about strategic thinking, honestly, is that it's not something you see. You can see executing, you can see influencing, and you can see re relationship building. You can't see thinking, <laughs> right? It's not a visual yeah. process. I mean, sometimes people have visual things that they do or things that you can see or record them doing. Like my husband has high ideation. So he has notebooks everywhere full of like his thoughts and his ideas and like he keeps notebooks. Um, and that's something visual for him for his thought patterns. But otherwise it's like, you know, what you see for my intellection is me staring at a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, it's like, I promise I'm being productive and I promise you want to give me that time to think about things, you know, stuff done, but. Yeah. Um, I, I find I have to just sometimes unplug from work because even if I read one email that I'm thinking and thinking, okay, how do I do this? How do I do this? And so I have time I, I just, never, yeah. I can never check my email right before I try to go to sleep because then I'm yeah. thinking about it all night long. Yeah. yeah. And then I dream it. <laughs> I cannot get away from it. Yeah. Well, I do keep a notebook by my bed. Yeah. <laughs> If I can't sleep, that's what I do. If I wake up with an idea, that's where it goes. <laughs> I put uh, mine on my phone by my bed. I just put my ideas in there and notes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, how do, you like. so how do you get stuff done when you have strategic thinking as a domain? It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with all those ideas? It's hard. Levi, what are your others? I can only see ID, ideation, strategic intellection. Uh, belief and, uh, oh shoot, uh, what's the other one? Now I can't even think about it. Uh, individualization, belief and individualization. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so belief is one of those that's a quasi-executing theme. It's interesting because how, you know, it's, to me, I go, how do you use belief to get things done? <laughs> That's the, I, I can see that as a, one of those, we talked about the detriments of some of the strengths that the, uh, I can see how ideation is like, yeah, this, I can sit there, I can lay and have insomnia night after night thinking about all the ideas of mm -hmm. ways to do things. And then the belief, I go, yeah, we could definitely make that happen. <laughs> 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 and the execution is the problem right the uh right. for the focus uh, right. that's another one but you do get stuff done so how do you get stuff done um one of the strengths i had talked about it might have been intellection talked about last minute kind of pressure mm. <clears throat> I, even though we, you know, we kind of look down on procrastination a lot, I find that I thrive when I am put under pressure to kind of get things done. And that's when I'm most productive is when I have a really dead set, a deadline that I can't adjust at all. Mm -hmm. And I just have to kind of keep going until it's done. Mm -hmm. So deadlines. Cool. Anybody else? I am not a procrastinator at all. I can't stand that. I'm the complete opposite. So how do you get stuff done, Carol? I'm a high achiever, so I'm really surprised that mine didn't show up as an achiever. Because mm. I really, like I'm up at the crack of dawn just plowing through life. Mm -hmm. It's hard to relax for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. So that comes from someplace. Um, and maybe achievers number six. And we just don't see it, right? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So um, what are your other two? You have in input, intellection, context. Um, learner and empathy. So okay. I have something redeeming at the end. <laughs> <laughs> there are no bad strengths. Yes. There are no bad strengths. And there are no better strengths, right? Gosh, yeah. this group is so funny. It's like this achiever must have mentality. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill the mighty achiever. And it's like, guys, like, that's not the best, <laughs> not the best strength. <laughs> there is no best strength. The best strengths are the one that's, that you have and use. So, <laughs> it's funny. So. So, so, for me, my second strength is achiever. <laughs> right, right. And, and Jerry has it too. So, yeah. she's number three. So, when I just put like a goal and I say, this is my end goal then I automatically start saying, okay, here are all the steps to fill it in. Mm -hmm. um, like two years ago, I did it. I like, I, I like to do triathlons and obstacle course racing and stuff. And so I'm like, okay, this is my goal. I want to do it in this amount of time. So where do I have to go? And I can outline every day. For me, it's like, if I have the long-term picture of where I want to go and how I need to break that down, mm -hmm. I can stick with it really well. Mm -hmm. um, 
like I did a triathlon two years ago and you have transition times, right? So you transition from um, like this one was a reverse. So it was like the swim to the, or no, it was the run to the bike. No, swim, run, bike. Was, oh. Or no, it, it was swim, bike, run. I've done some reverse ones too. Mm -hmm. um, but so I planned out like that whole transition phase and laid out stuff in a certain order and did it. And I did pretty well in it. But the interesting part is you do like splits. Mm -hmm. So it'll compare you against all the racers for how fast you swam and for all the fat racers, how fast you ran and biked. But it will also compare your two transition times in there. Mm -hmm. And so I've done like six or seven transitions, like races. And this last race, I had the fastest transitions in both of those of any other racer out there. Mm -hmm. um, just because I'm like, hey, this is how I do it. And then I talk with other people afterwards. I'm like, yeah, this made sense to me. And they're like, what? Like, <laughs> I just. <laughs> you think about it? Yeah. You're intentional about it? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I wasn't the fastest on the other areas, but the transitions I always was. Just, mm -hmm. so I'm like, this is how you do it. And so you're really focused on efficiency and yeah. how to do stuff the fastest, most efficient way. Yeah. And, I'm and kind of all, that way. And yeah, and all the time, it's probably like that with all of you, but all the time, sometimes it drives other family members nuts because I'm like no this isn't that efficient like you do the dishwasher this way it's more efficient and you stack more in and, you know <laughs> so that's that real strong interplay between strategic and achiever right I mean they get it done the best way so strategic sees all the potential possibilities and you're like and this is the fastest route <laughs> yeah and I hate it when other people don't see the fastest route <laughs> <laughs> well, now y'all know how to get under Peter's skin. <laughs> Just do it the slowest, most ridiculous way. <laughs> and none of us would do that. And so. he'll, right never the fast lane. Do, he'll never ask you to do anything ever again. No, I'm just kidding. Just don't, just don't drive in the fast lane unless you're really driving fast. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um, so then think about how would you use your strengths um, since influencing is the least common at Lincoln, how would you use your strategic thinking to influence others? I'm going to leave you guys to chat about that and go check on the other groups. Bye. Bye. I need to work on my weaknesses. But this is teaching me, no, you need to work on your strengths because um, you focus on what's working. So if you focus on your strengths, then again, that whole self-esteem and validating, where if you start wanting to work on your weaknesses, I mean, yes, we need to improve and work on things, but if we focus on our strengths, that just helps our self-esteem too. Yes, and imagine in a team of say five people, if we knew, you know, like our, our bottom five and other people on the team had strengths in our bottom five, how much more would we appreciate those people? Like how much more would we go to them for advice and how would that make them feel to be invited to share from their strengths to help the whole group? Like this begins to this, this kind of appreciating each other, um, I think can strengthen the whole culture. That, that's an interesting concept. It it also <clears throat> makes me think there's there's bonding capabilities between students. You know, if they were put in groups like this, where hey, we're the executing team, right? Or we're the influencing team. We're the strategic thinking team. You know, uh, where they may not associate with those kids in in normal the course of their normal school day, they may not ever know who they are or they may not be really close friends to the, with them. But now suddenly I have something in common with that, that person and we're on the same team. We're the st strategic people, you know, or relationship building t people. And, and uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, and the fact that it doesn't uh, focus on weaknesses at all, you know, uh, and, and none of these could be considered uh, something derogatory, you know, like, hey, you're, you're a developer, huh? you're a developer, you know, or, <laughs> or you're, you're a relator, or you have woo, you know, 
it, it's kind of, there's no way to, if you understand what those mean, there's no way to make that be a negative, I guess. And so the bullying capabilities here maybe aren't as, as possible. Well, and think about how much they can learn about each other, you know? I don't know. I just, I think it would be a wonderful implementation. Would it be helpful for teachers to know in advance of class, the school year starting, like if every teacher knew their kids top three strengths before the school year started, is that something that would be helpful to teachers? I think so. I, I, I teach first grade, so, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> they're still pretty little. Um, and I find out right away. <laughs> Being with them some of their strengths for sure I don't know about um, junior high Robert you know uh, with junior high within uh, a month you can tell you will not know whether they're an achiever or whatever but you can tell the students you know how to respond in a month after you meet them uh, because of dedication, because of how they, they meet, they uh, treat all their students and so on, you, you can tell without, I mean, you, you would not know, like I, say, I said, uh, where they fit in this category. But if you were going to teach this or find out, I think it needs to go one step farther. For instance, about, okay, so now we know this. I think it would be nice to be able to use how do we, now that I know this, five kids are achievers, how can we use them in the school to increase their, you know, to get the strength to help others, to help the school, or whatever they may be in, whatever category may be at. Uh, not just to know, but also to put them to use, like a puzzle, put them together, and how are we going to make those people, make the whole the puzzle to work together. I think a great place to try that would be like the Stuco class, the student council, Probably. because they, they meet together and all these different strengths would come into part of all the different things that they need to accomplish in Stuco. And so I think that would be a great place to, to experiment with this and see how, how they do and how they change or if they start. And you'll um, probably find most of them will be probably have a lot of these executing leadership yeah yeah they will have you know influence and so on but they seem like they will probably have us by the nature they are they want to do something they want to achieve something right but they'll be i mean everybody will have different strengths too like some of them might be executing strengths and then they can say <laughs> you know then like you said before they can be on the executing team and Certainly. so mm -hmm. I'd be, I'd be very interested in if the kids all knew each other's strengths. Like, you know, sometimes they'll say, okay, all right, guys, let's, um, we're going to get into groups of four, or we're going we're gonna to make teams and pick your team captain. Uh, in my grade school days, kids picked each other's friends to be on their teams. So if kids knew that there were these four domains and they knew each other's strengths, I'd be curious to, see, curious to see if they would change who they pick and why. Like, would it shift away from just friends and would they be thinking, wow, I wanna make sure I have at least someone with dominant executing, someone with dominant influencing. Like, I wanna make sure my team has all these strengths represented. Or would they still be like, you know what, I just, I'm more comfortable around my friends. I wanna pick my friends. So I don't know, maybe it depends on how big the prize is. <laughs> be some really interesting data that would come out of that for sure, I think. Um, while, while Kristen's on, I've got a question for you, Kristen. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the, uh, the younger version of Strength Finder with the 10 themes. Yes. Um, what's the lower end limit on how old you need to be before you could take that? So part of it is based on um, reading, um, like comprehension, just because, again, it's kind of that self-assessment. So if you don't know what a word means, it's really hard to identify whether or not it applies to you. Um, mm -hmm. I've had kids as young as eight or nine take it, and that's a little bit of a stretch. 
uh, but and it's typically recommended for 10 to 15. So Melissa, you're out of luck, maybe. Well, I was wondering, are they thinking of maybe coming up with um, a strength training for younger kids with words that they can understand? So not that I know of, however, um, so I've got a kiddo and he's five. So he's enter entering kindergarten this year. And he and I have been participating in what's called strength spotting. So something that I do and that I learned from Gallup is just this identification of potential areas of strengths. Like you and Robert both said, you know, within a month or, you know, some time around these kiddos, you can start to identify and figure out, you know, you don't necessarily need an assessment to say, oh, these kids really care and value um, organization or they really care and value their relationships with other kids or they really care and are motivated by checking things off a list or by being in front of the room or by spending time thinking, you know, you can start to identify kind of where they're starting to fall. And so you can do that with kids in preschool up until eighth grade. And even just within kind of these, um, not necessarily boundaries or brackets, but generalized settings, you know, start to spot that and say, gosh, I really love and care. I love how you care about your friend's feelings. Or gosh, that was so helpful of you to volunteer um, to be the, the door monitor today. Or, you know, um, or gosh, I love it when you make things a game and you're competing against your friends, right? Um, these are some of those core things like competing and confidence, dependability. Those are some of the themes that we use with the, the younger group. So you can absolutely strength spot, validate, and encourage at any age. Yeah. So you're not necessarily out of luck, but even just like playing some of these games to identify like where do they tend to group themselves? You know, are they caring more about organization or structure or helping others or, you know, our little empaths um, who, you know, um, you know, my kiddo, somebody else is crying and I cannot, you know, get him to stop paying attention and convince him that that person will be taken care of until he goes and checks for himself. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those okay. kinds of things, right. <laughs> So, and these things don't necessarily map into the 34 that we have, but we can absolutely mimic some of the um, activities and things that we're doing now and make it, you know, kid-friendly. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. You do have a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'm thinking of, yes, we are, we are, we are who we are. Mm -hmm. But then we also have students that have, have already a tough life. Absolutely. Which has kind of changed some of these things. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe a very, a person that's very whoa person, but life has changed them, or at least for the moment has changed them. Mm -hmm. And made him somewhere else, something else. Mm -hmm. So not always you can characterize, you say, okay, that person's where, where this, you know, this, this is what a person belongs to. Right. And it's a lot of those at this age, at the age of junior high. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of students that experience very tough, either by illnesses, either by being bullied, mm -hmm. um, even by being a special ed education. Mm -hmm. So it is a very, very tough thing to just characterize someone who belongs to you and the group without taking consideration their personality because life has made them what he what they, those people what students are right so but but how many of those kids value being recognized for something that they bring to the table right for a strength that an inner strength that they can demonstrate even if not consistently but you know is, is underlying or you can recognize it being there and so given that opportunity to recognize that strength, even if it's not manifesting itself in the best way possible. Oh, certainly. Yeah. So then that's, again, kind of where that power comes from. So again, not labeling or not saying you are this or you, you have to be this or, you know, compartmentalizing, but finding opportunities 
to really spot those strengths and reinforce the capacity that they have is, is where, where this is coming from, is that application. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Tyler, did I answer your question sufficiently? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, it's really kind of geared more towards, uh, or just around the idea of how would we apply this kind of, of, of test to the earlier grades? You know, mm -hmm. what, what do we do there? How do we, how do we, how do we work that? I like what you started off with as far as the, um, the strength spotting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and laying the groundwork <laughs> there. Hey, we're all unique. We all have value. We all have individual uh, worth and, and, and strengths that are unique to us. Right. Um, you know, yeah, it's interesting. And then part of that is modeling the behavior. So that's why we start with the staff and the faculty and, you know, the people that these kids interact with from, you know, everyone from the front office to the principals, to the lunch folks, to the janitors, to the, you know, facilities, to IT, to the teachers, right? Any kind of opportunity these kids have to interact with someone at Lincoln, an adult, who has this kind of strengths philosophy that they're engaging with on a regular basis, it starts to become second nature to recognize and do that strengths body, even if you're not totally cognizant that that's what you're doing. It becomes that culture. And so it becomes even less about using the terminology of specific themes and more about finding those opportunities to let those kids shine at what they're good at and the people around you letting them shine and recognizing them for the differences and letting them shine at what they're good at i love that we're also all learning this together like we're sharing our epiphanies our questions um, I wonder if it would be powerful for each grade level of teachers to form their own learning teams together where they can kind of huddle together on a more consistent basis to share and learn about each other's strengths mm -hmm. and share ideas of, um, hey, I wonder if I tried this in my classroom to help my kids begin to wrap their heads around the idea of seeing each other's strengths. He, Everyone is so creative, you know, it's, there's no strengths master here. Everyone comes up with their own ideas. And that could be great as a school if we could hear from different teachers that try different things and said, wow, this, my kids responded so excitedly to this activity. Um, I think that would transform our whole culture. Mm -hmm. And can I just... Um, recognize that I think it's awesome that the executing group has just moved straight to execution. How are we applying? <laughs> You've That's been where we're at the whole time. <laughs> You've been given this opportunity. So, um, so while you're executing, don't forget to address how do you complement these other domains that you're working with here at Lincoln. And I'm going to go check on some other folks, but I know there's going to be good discussion there. We'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> that's cool that's actually the personality type that I always wanted growing up I wanted I don't know it seemed just I don't know I wanted to have the red personality type I'm not sure if that is red I don't know how they equate but I wanted to be like decision maker forge ahead you know build something wonderful so that's very cool Oh, great. You came in right as I was saying, I wished I had something else. <laughs> no judgment here, Lurley. We're good. I also did say that I'm happy. <laughs> I'm really happy with what I have. 
I really, but I, anyway, I, hello there. Hello. <laughs> I, I just feel bad because we're nearing the end of time. So I just wanted to pop in and listen to kind of the tail end of your discussion. So has it been productive? Has it been helpful? Here, now maybe everybody say one thing that stood out to you from our conversation. There we go. Morley, you're up. Um, I was just thinking, well, I was, I was taking a second to think, I think that one thing we've all acknowledged and I think that we value, even though sometimes it, it may have taken us a while to get there, is that there, this, these character or these um, skill sets that we have under, what is this called that we're in? What group is this? Relationship mm -hmm. building. Under relationship building, they're, they seem to have a certain softness and a certain just a great deal of care and concern about people and um, and lifting and building and listening and feeling, but with a focus on people. And that's a very cool thing. I think sometimes we undervalue that in this world that we live in, which is why when I was younger, I thought I must be an executive to be important, you know, and to do good work. Mm -hmm. So but the older I get, um, the more I just realize what a valuable skill it is to be able to see other people with true eyes and care about other people when they're weak as well as when they're strong and just value and love people in general. So I, we kind of talked a little bit about how we have some characteristics that might be considered soft and gentle and those are beautiful. Yep. Thanks. I'm actually going to go call everybody back to the main room so you guys can come back. I have to tell my group to keep it under wraps. I can't be the person over discipline in the school and have it get out that I have a soft side to me. <laughs> I will tell you a story about that in a minute, Robin. Okay. Hello, Erin. Hello. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> no, I have a really, really great story about relationship building. It's not my story, but I asked my friend if I could share it with my groups because it's, it's kind of powerful to me um, about relationship building and soft strengths. So, but we'll wait for everybody else because I think it's okay. just a fun story. Oh my gosh, and we're almost out of time. I lost track of time, I literally did. You guys were having some great discussions. Oh, shit. Hi, we're back. Welcome back, welcome back. I was teasing the executing theme because they went straight to execution. How are we using this now? <laughs> Are you talking about us? <laughs> I am totally talking about you guys. Well, That's funny. funny. So I have a quick story to, to just build off of Robin in, in the relationship building themes. Um, one of my favorite stories is a fellow coach was coaching a police chief down in Mexico City. Um, and let's talk about a really rough circumstance, right? And he did his top five um, and was working with the strengths coach. And he was thinking, you know, I'm a police chief, I'm a police officer, I deal with drug lords and all those crazy things. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have command, I'm going to have discipline, I'm going to have, you know, all of these things. And it, his um, results come back and his number one is empathy. Wow. <laughs> and his Thanks. first response, oh, right. don't tell my men. <laughs> 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 because that's going to undercut the perceived macho-ness or strength that he has. But when it comes down to it, the reason why he was such a really good police chief was because he knew how to lead with his empathy and deliver challenging news and bad news and take care of his people under really, really trying times. So how awesome of a strength to have in that particular job and field, even though it's not an expected strength or you know, a tough strength, but how much value add could that have? So, um, okay, so we only have a couple minutes and I don't wanna take a lot of your time tonight. Any final thoughts that you guys have that you wanna share with the group? I 
everyone's like, just let us go. Um, <laughs> all right, but here's what I do want you to do is I want you to think about, um, as you move forward, where and how can you implement your strengths in your day to day? You know, think about what's your one big takeaway from the training tonight and how are you going to implement it in your day to day, whether that's at work or in your personal life or interpersonal skills or whatever. What's your one takeaway from the training tonight and how are you going to implement it? This is a rhetorical question. You want us to answer this? For I want you to answer this, even if it's in your head. But if you write it down, it's even better. Um, but our time is over. So um, I'll stick around for a few minutes if you have any additional questions. But write, down, write it down and put it into practice. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your valuable time and energy and participation. It is always a pleasure to work with my folks from Lincoln Academy. Like I'm, I'm beginning to think of you guys as my folks, my, my group. <laughs> so I love it. Um, but thank you, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you thank for you yours, know. Kristen, Mariana. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Kristen, I can say really quick that as we had our discussion with the relationship builders, that we are somewhat of the glue to, to all of these other categories. So we are great supporters. We want to follow through because we have that uh, want to you know, the executing people, but we have that responsibility to follow through and make sure it gets done. And so that was a takeaway I had is that we really have, even though we're kind of the lovey-dovey group, we actually can be add a lot to an organization. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good takeaway I had. And so I can be okay with me. <laughs> more than okay amy you're wonderful okay. you bring such a unique contribution to the group that you work with thank you you're welcome this and to the classroom great. thanks for your training yeah i was in that group and it was it was good tina was in that group too awesome it was That's a good awesome. conversation kristen yeah I just have a quick question. I'm struggling. Um, I wanted to print my reports out with my five, you know, my top five with all that paragraph behind it. So I'd be prepared today and I spent a half an hour and here comes 5.30 and I didn't get it. But I kept sending a request to reset the password. Uh -huh. I would, I would um, click on um, username and then um, click on the password that it gave me for a strength. And it kept telling me um, it wouldn't work. It was the wrong password. And that was in the reset place. So I don't know, is there a email or a contact person I can talk to so I can get in and get? Okay, great. Yep, absolutely. So okay. I'm on it. Well, I'm, I'm looking. Up. Yeah, so here's Gallup right now under assistance. Uh -huh. You have requested assistance with your account. Reset password, clicked on it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. So, um, let me send just, you. Yeah, I'm just hoping that I can access that guide you're talking about to the, um, yeah, what's it called? Yeah, insight guide. Insight guide. Um, yeah, I know. Actually, that. what's your last name? Hendrickson. H and did you do it through a link that was sent to you for Lincoln Academy? Did I try to reset the password? No, when you first did the assessment, did you do it through a link that yes. was sent to you? Yes, my first assessment was through Lincoln Academy's email. That's Perfect. correct. So, cause I think I actually have access to that. So while we wait to get some help from um, Gallup, 
I think I can send that to you. So send it through that link and email. So um, I can actually upload it to chat here in just a second. Okay. So. Um, okay. Well, gonna... While you're doing that, Kristen, when I was given the link to go in and do the survey, mm -hmm. it said you do not have the authority to do that. Please check okay. with your administrator. So yeah. I never was able to go in and take the survey at all. Okay. So, so how do I get that so I can go do it and get my results? Um, I can resend you that link, Tina. Okay. Um, so, and we'll get you a code that works. And if okay. it doesn't, feel free to reach out to me um, anytime over the next couple of days. Okay. Um, so this is Ashley. Ashley, are you related to an Audrey by any chance? I am. Audrey Henriksen? Audrey? I do. She's I, my niece. She's your niece. She was in my career exploration class. Awesome. Oh, yeah, at UVU uh, in my first semester. So that well, was it my first semester? I think so. I think Audrey was in my my first semester. If not, it would have been fall of 2019. It's all muddled together now. But yeah, I saw the you, last name, and you notice how we spelled our last name. Yes. Yeah. 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 She yeah, was she really was great. Doing, Is she yeah. still doing stuff with like? Wasn't she working at the planetarium or wasn't yep. she working for space camp or it's something? A, yeah, it's a space center that Central the School. Space center. Do. Yeah, right. now they're in remodeling this whole thing. Okay, there we are, Kristen. Yay. Uh, if I click download, where's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so go into your downloaded file. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, Tina, watch for that it's email in... for me. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Watch Thank you. On my list. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye. Bye. Nice, nice to see you, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> so I click download and where's it going? Um, it is going to um, your downloads or you can, I think you should be able to like right click it. Let's see. No. And save um, it to a certain spot. Yeah. When oh. you're, well, no, no, no. When you open it. So, so um, you should, when it downloads, it should be downloading kind of um, as a PDF, yeah. So like if you've got Adobe or Acrobat or whatever, yeah. And then once it opens, I would go up to File, Save As, and then you can choose where to save it and how to save it, like what to title it. So you can save it to your documents, okay. or you can save it wherever you want, where you know you're gonna find it. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. So pleasure working with you, Ashley. You're so sweet. You too. You too. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Oh, I've got to push save first. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saved the file. It won't even let me leave the meeting. All right. I think I got it. Okay. All right. Hey. Hey, are you still here? I'm looking at, um, I'm just, What'd you say? I'm sending that code to Tina. Okay. Do you want to stop the recording? Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Probably a good idea.